So uh, they show it. They go back to the desk. Shivani is still quiet quitting. He is there. He has shown up for work. He has punched his clock. He's where he's supposed to be. He's not participating in any of this garbage. FTR then storm out to the ring for a promo. Cash is wearing the exact same Bart Simpson t-shirt that I bought for my father when I was a child on a vacation to Washington, D.C. in like 1991. <laughs> it was astonishing. He calls the Bucks the Rod and Todd Flanders of AEW. They can't accept they lost FTR. They're upset that the FTR, uh, the Bucks are bringing this up now. Fuck this work shoot shit, man. It sucks. Then, speaking of things you don't need to bring back, Dax admits, without the Bucks, I might still be shaving Cash's back. Why? Why dig up this old dirt? Why? I swear to God, the only reason I knew what he was referencing was because I happened to be scrolling X, and I happened to see that picture that, like, Jey Uso posted from the shower of of one of them shaving the other's yeah. back from like five years ago or whatever. Like if I had not been on Twitter at that exact moment, I would have had no fucking idea what they were talking about. And I presume that 880,000 people watching this, 875,000 of them had no idea what they were talking about. The, the Maybe the only good part of this was the... the Parade of cryptic gifts shared by sports entertainers in various promotions as this aired was uh, thought-provoking. I'll call it that. But uh, some very creative but cryptic messages sent. Anyway, they finally say we're doing this for hardworking wrestlers who need more places to work. Because now apparently AEW is on the verge of being shut down. I don't know. The fans spend their harder money to deserve a great match. That's fine. You built this house. We're going to put the roof on it just so we can blow it off. All right, it's. I say it's over. I say at least we can move on. But what are the odds that somebody is going to say something on Monday? I think pretty high. I actually don't think anyone's going to. I think I really they're going to. I think they're going to say all their stuff on Twitter like they've been doing. They'll probably say something off air. But it's really not in the wheelhouse lately in WWE for them to say that stuff on air. Yeah. They'll say it on McAfee's show or on Twitter or on a press conference, but they don't do it on TV. And that's my main issue with all of this stuff. You want to show the footage? Fucking put it on X. As many people will see it as saw it on TV. Yeah, yeah you angry about what Triple H said, presumably about Will Ospreay. He never even said Ospreay's name. Yeah. Well, have Ospreay do a, a segment on it somewhere, some interview. You didn't need it on TV, especially back-to-back. -back. 20 straight minutes yeah. of referencing people in WWE. Yep. There was a... Slight pause for a Brian Danielson video about Will Ospreay. Danielson is outmatched in age and strength and aerial, sk aerial skills. His only chance is to take it to the ground. If he can't win, what would a loss like that do to him at this point in his career? And I suspect the answer is nothing, but you got to try and make it seem important. So then, yes, Renee interviews Will Ospreay, who comes out jolly as ever. He notes he's only got five minutes because TV time is expensive. And he wants to use... He didn't say this, but what he did. He wants to use that expensive TV time to address un well, not a, 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 a anonymous attacks from somebody in another promotion who's not his boss. has nothing to do with Dynasty or Dynamite or, or Collision or any of this stuff. So he's very upset that a certain figure implied that he is afraid of the grind. Talks about the grinding he's been doing. And the only reason this guy is in the position to attack me is because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. Renee is there. Sweet, lovable Renee. She has the same look on her face that Shivani had. Maybe worse. Like, oh my God. What are we fuck. even doing here? What is happening? Can we talk about the fucking match with Brian Danielson already? Now, thankfully, he did. And it was great once he did. Healthier men, younger men, better than, than better men than you have tried and failed to beat me. But I can't call myself the best until I pin you. These people have paid their money to see the best. This is AEW, where the best wrestle. You'll find out why my name is Will Ospreay, and I am on another level. And once he got down to business, it was a fantastic promo. So I mentioned this on Observer Live today. Talked to a lot of people last night. And uh, for what it is worth, for what it's worth, the belief is that Tony has gotten this out of his system. 
He was angry. He showed his footage. He shot his angle. And now he's going to move on. That is what people believe. I talked to people there who could not believe this thing aired, but they said, you know what? What's done is done. We're at the bottom of the barrel. There's nowhere to go but up. It's all over. Let's put it behind us, and let's just move forward. And that seems to be the feeling within the company is, let's move on. It's done. Let's not talk about it again. I pray that's the case because I was over it by the end of that that Will Ospreay segment. We had a Julia Hart promo video. She's being all spooky and there's masks everywhere. And she says, I'll peel back your mask, Willow. There's more than smiles and rainbows. There is hurt and there is envy. I will turn your smile into a frown and make sure you never touch my crown. Which rhyme? I just realized that. At least there was a point behind the spookiness, not just vague, cryptic statements. Lionhook and Shibata versus Shane Taylor promotions. More of an angle than a match. A good chunk of the actual match took place during the break. From the get-go, Anthony Agogo tags out to avoid Jericho. I don't think he ever returned. And then Shibata tagged himself in, so Jericho's whole game plan went out the window. We have a long commercial break. We come back. Shibata is running wild, but he accidentally yanks Jericho off the apron, so Jericho's pissed. Then when Shibata tries to tag Hook, Jericho yanks Hook off the apron. They yell at each other. As this is going on, Taylor, not Agogo, the Olympic boxer, Shane Taylor punches Shibata, and Moriarty hits a face buster that is called The Fang which I don't think I've ever seen before because he never wins. He pins Shibata, whoop de doo And uh, let's recap here what has happened to Chris Jericho in the past, I don't know, six, eight months. He was the leader of a group called the Jericho Appreciation Society. Everything was going fine. He decided to dump all of them all at once so that he could join Don Callis. But then Kelly stabbed him, him in the back. Somehow, this qualified as a babyface turn for Chris Jericho. He's done a whole lot of nothing, mostly getting his ass kicked. Never got his revenge on Callis. Forget winning a match. He never like put his face in cake. He never he never got his moment at all. Out of nowhere, he wants a team with Hook, and now they're already breaking up. You know, it's funny because uh, I write these reports for the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, and the uh, Dynamite one will be out later on tonight. But in both the Dynamite and the NXT report, I wrote the exact same words about two different segments, which was, this escalated quickly. Literally, in one, like, Jericho has gone from being Hook's buddy that has taken him under his wing in a benign manner to being a total heel and already breaking up with Hook on one show, by the way. And on NXT... We had Trick beating Carmelo at the uh, at the show on, on Saturday. And literally in one show, we now have Trick versus Melo in a rematch in a steel cage next week. And Ilya Dragunov versus Trick for the title, where if Trick loses, he must leave NXT. What? <laughs> that was a lot in going on. In both of these cases. It's like, how many shows did I miss? Renee interviews Dustin Rhodes, who says nothing changes about his plan for tonight. He has nothing to lose, everything to gain. Grit, work ethic, passion, and glory. That's what I do every night, every week. Tonight will be no different. Kazuchika Okada versus Cristiano Argento. I needed this match. It's funny you say that, Vinny. Mm -hmm. I didn't really, uh, I didn't really have a problem with it, but like at this point. In this show, I was like, you hired Okada. You paid him all this money. He's been gone for several weeks, and you've had backstage packages to make sure that we could at least see him on the show. And then finally, he is in America live, and he gets two moves on Cristiano Argento. That's what we're doing with Okada. I was not happy. He did cut a promo and set up the match with, with Pac afterwards. Yeah. And then Bucks and FTR and everybody ran out. But at this point, I was like, dude, you know, all the people were talking about, should he go to WWE or should he go to AEW? WWE or AEW? He's in AEW now, and he's either in backstage segments looking at television or he's having squash matches. What are we doing here? Well, 
We are setting up a great match against Packet Dynasty and not doing much until then. Hey, I love watching Okada beat up geeks. The complete lack of respect he shows these men makes my heart sing. Hit the dropkick, hit the rainmaker, nine stars. Hey, Pack, he says, I accept your challenge. I'll see you at Dynasty. Pack comes out to fight him. The Bucks jump him from behind, which is kind of interesting because Okada came out by himself. I thought maybe they're splitting these guys up, but no, the Bucks are still on his side. And of course, there are a chance for that other guy in the backstage fight. FTR makes a save, but Okada cuts him off with a chair. There's an EVP trigger for FTR and a chair shot for Pack. And again, all of this is building to the pay per view. It is not random stuff for no reason going nowhere. I thought they did all in all on the show a much better job of things happening for a reason and not for uh, just to have stuff happen. The Bang Bang Gang does a promo. They crushed Darby's dreams and ankle. They defended the Ring of Honor Trios titles and they claimed to have beat up Billy Gunn. Jay says he wants to do it again on Rampage. I screamed out, no! Fortunately, he did not mean Billy Gunn specifically. Eventually, we learned it will be Matt Seidel. So much about Rock this week. So I decided a good match for Rock would be uh, Cold Stone. Strap him on. Corner post must have done damage. And Stone Cold kicked the Rock out of the ring. Shane, Shane was rooting for Rock. A closed line came while down. Rock put his arm out across Stone Cold. It was just a massive infusion. Stone Cold won the match. Cool. Can you verify we did not use AI to replace Granny? <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.